Hello, eighth graders. So please don't mind the Sunday look of G. Um, this is just what you get. Um, so we're talking metamorphic rocks. We have talked igneous and sedimentary. Now, if we were to just take it one step further, we get to metamorphic rocks. We've talked about how igneous rocks are made of molten rock and that it either cools very, very quickly or very, very slowly. Awesome. Sedimentary rocks are little bits and pieces of different rocks that have been weathered, eroded, um, deposited, compacted, and cemented um, together to create a whole new rock. Now, metamorphic rocks is essentially being able to apply heat and pressure in order to now change one of those other rocks or another metamorphic rock into something new. So let's talk about that. We're still working with Middle School Earth Science Standard 2-1, which states that you will develop a model to describe the cycling of Earth's materials and the flow of energy that drives this process. Basically, what you're going to be able to do is emphasize on the processes of melting, crystallization, weathering, deformation, and sedimentation, which act together to form minerals and rocks through the cycling of Earth's materials. Basically, you should be able to describe for me what some characteristics of rocks are. Identify the three types of rocks and today focusing in on metamorphic, but hopefully being able to separate out igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. And then finally, identify the um, processes in which we get different types of metamorphic rocks. So what must happen in order for a metamorphic rock to actually form? Okay, so this is going to sound really lame because it's like, well, isn't that what's happening with all the other ones? Um, kind of. So there needs to be a structural slash physical or chemical change to the parent rock. So we have talked about how there is a structural change um, as far as like breaking down parent rocks into smaller rocks to get sedimentary, sedimentary rocks. But when we're talking structural or physical, the parent rock is staying whole but rather you are having a whole lot of amount of heat or pressure or even some additional fluids, typically water with different minerals, um, being forced upon these rocks. Um, so the changes may include temperature, pressure, and additional fluids. Typically those fluids though have to be like superheated almost to the point of melting the rock but not melting the rock completely. If we were to melt the rock completely, that's how we get an igneous rock. So we can't go that far, um, but we need to apply enough heat and pressure to make some things inside of it cook or bake, similarly to like how you would bake a cake. You technically have cake in the cake batter. It's just after you apply heat for an extended period of time, now that soupy, goopy cake batter is now that fluffy, rich cake that we all typically choose. There had to be heat applied to that cake in order to change it, but yet nothing in the dish changed. Um, it's still flour, sugar, eggs, milk, all that kind of fun jazz, but as soon as you add that heat, it does something chemically to make it bubble up into the cake that we know and really should only eat because salmonella, not good. Okay, so there are two ways that this can happen. What we first have to understand is that any sort of metamorphic changes happen deep within Earth's crust. This is not happening at the surface, not even in the least bit. So sedimentary rocks really only occur at the surface. Igneous rocks start deep underground, but then work their way up, um, either very quickly or very slowly, depending on which kind we're talking about. But metamorphic rocks can only happen underneath the surface. So the first type, which I think is the easiest to understand, would be contact metamorphism. Now, what do I mean by that? I'm going to come in with my little white pen here. You obviously can see where the magma chamber is on this first diagram. 
And as you go up, you get that really weird region between the rock and the magma chamber. So everything below here is liquid. So that's molten rock. Eventually, that will turn into igneous rock. Everything here is solid. They're in layers or strata. So they're, let's just call it sedimentary rock. Okay. Now, what starts to happen is where all of these meet, where you're getting the heat from the magma chamber, but yet the coolness from the actual layer of rocks above it. Where those are coming into play, that is where contact um, metamorphism occurs because that rock is getting heated to the point of almost melting, but it's not quite melting. It's starting to um, change some of those structures on the inside, very similar to our cake. So that is contact metamorphism. When you apply enough heat to something for it to kind of change, um, so it can really only happen along those ma magma chamber like boundaries. Okay, regional. This is where the pressure comes into play. So what happens, and we'll talk about this shortly after um, or before winter break, but we are sitting on top of our crust, but our crust is not whole. It is like if you were to take an orange and peel it, but then try to put all the orange peels back on there. There's some gaps in um, movement. That's essentially what our crust of our earth looks like. Okay, so they all are moving. These little plates on top of our earth are moving. And what happens sometimes is that one plate gets thrusted underneath another plate. So what this is, is this is a continental plate and it is just going about its business heading in that direction, sort of a thing, okay? And then you get this oceanic plate, which is going against it. Oceanic plate is much, much denser, so it's not as thick, but it's far heavier. So it gets thrusted underneath that continental plate. Now what's happening there is you are forcing so much heat, you're forcing so much pressure that everything around the um, plates where they're coming together is getting to that form of almost plasticky, almost melted, but not really, um, allowing it to start to metamorph or change um, what's going on. This is what happens at mountain ranges um, and things like that, but it all starts deep under Earth's surface, okay? So contact, you have rock physically coming in contact with very, very high temperatures. Regional, you are having two things come together and applying a great amount of pressure. So if that wasn't confusing enough, now I'm going to send you on your own. So Remember your champ's expectations as you move through this, please, and thank you, and keep following along. We only have, like, five more slides. So, how and where do metamorphic rocks form? Well, we've already kind of talked about this. Anywhere we, where we can find intense pressure and temperature changes is where this is all going to take place. Um, well below Earth's surface is the first thing. You're not going to find it up here. We don't have enough of a significant um, temperature change, and there's not a whole heck of a lot of pressure. Um, so the deeper you go into our crust, the closer you get to our Earth's core. And what that then does is it starts to heat things up because it's molten rock in our core. Um, so that, but then the deeper you go, you also have a lot more gravitational pressure placed upon you. This is the same reason why, like in submarines, you have to pressurize the cabin. Same with like flying, pressurize it because there's not as much pressure um, the higher you go in our altitude and there's a lot of pressure the deeper you go in the ocean. That's also why we're not really able to explore the depths of our ocean is because there's so much pressure, it would literally crush us like a can. So yeah, um, so 
the deeper you go down, the more pressure and then the more heat is that's being applied. So that's where you're going to find metamorphic rocks originally. Now, how is it that rock can also behave like plastic? Well, we've kind of talked about this already. Within regional metamorphism, so where those two plates are coming together, essentially you're placing such an extreme amount of pressure that the rocks kind of seize up and do that weird like Newtonian black thing where they stay a solid but they kind of sort of start moving to where you get these really cool bends and um, twists within sedimentary rock layers. Um, these are both examples of nice, G-N-E-I-S-S, um, gorgeous, gorgeous rocks, um, but you get these strata bends, and oh my goodness, now I'm going to forget what the term is called. I'll remember it, I promise, eventually, but not right now. So um, you get these bends. Originally, if this were happening, if this were just sedimentary rock, this white band would just be going across some wet street. But because it's been placed under such intense heat and pressure, it's now doing this curve because it's acting like plastic and getting bent and twisted, but not breaking. Um, so kind of cool. Um, if you were to heat up hard candy, okay. Um, if you were to place it in your hand for a long enough time, um, even things like Laffy Taffy's start to become easier to like manipulate and twist and turn and things like that, but they don't break versus if you just keep them room temperature and you like go to try to like bend it, it will snap. Then there's something called foliation. So foliation are these parallel layers of minerals. Okay. Again, kind of set up your sedimentary rock ideas. But what happens is that when you place heat and pressure on them sometimes, they start to create what looks like squished book pages. Um, so if I were to like take my little book here, so you can see like there's layers, but it's rather like flat. But if I go and I try to pull them back, you can see like, oh, let me see if I can you see like little steps, so you can see in that far corner, but there's now a little step. That is foliation. Um, this is what happens to our slate, um, our phyllite, and then my all time favorite um, rock, which is schist. Um, so foliation is where you get these little staircase steps sort of things. Um, so that's how Rocks can kind of act plasticky where you get those bends and folds, but then you also get these layering and book pages um, of foliation. Now, there's a different texture um, as compared to all other rocks. So the color and texture of non-foliated rocks. Foliated rocks are really easy to find because obviously they look like little staircases. But what happens in metamorphic rocks is you get these fairly similarly shaped and sized mineral crystallizations. Okay, and that is because they are um, exposed to the same amount of heat and same amount of pressure throughout um, and getting them to just about the point of melting, but not quite all the way there. So all of these little pieces are really like beyond the fact that like my mouse drawing skills are not great. They're all about the same size. Um, the top photo is of quartzite. So obviously it has a lot of quartz within it. And then marble. Marble you know from countertops and um, there's so much marble like out in Washington DC and other monuments are made out of marble because it's very very durable and very very pretty and the fact that 
all of these crystals are relatively the same size, so it looks cohesive, very like interior designery sort of a thing. Um, so if your metamorphic rock isn't foliated, you're going to look for the colors and the crystal sizes. Um, quartz is very, very similar, has that hexa hexagonal sort of shape. You guys know it. We've handled quartz, things like that. And then marble is quartz as well. It's actually granite under like intense heat and pressure. So how does contact metamorphism change rocks and what does the rock look like? So contact, remember, this is where you have that magma chamber. And then right on the outside of all of it is where you're starting to get that metamorphism. So when magma comes in contact with rocks, the heat of the magma interacts with the surrounding rocks, causing it to undergo metamorphism, typically leading to non-foliated metamorphic rocks because that foliation really happens because of that plate sort of um, boundary coming together. So this is where you're gonna get a lot of your extra textures and crystals and things like that because you are getting everything to the point of almost melting, but not quite um, to where it allows those minerals to melt a little bit inside the rocks and then enough time to cool and grow exponentially um, from say like sedimentary rocks or igneous rocks, things like that. So, um, Typically, that contact comes with um, crystal crystallization in non-foliated rocks versus regional metamorphism gives you a lot more of those foliated rocks. So those little steps. Um, this is um, this occurs over incredibly large areas. Typically, entire mountain ranges look this way. Um, if you were to go to the Rockies or the Appalachian or um, the Himalayan you're gonna see a lot of metamorphism. Um, again, that collision of the plates bends and twists the rocks, leaving them very foliated and textured and have those little steps. So, hint and twink, wink, nudge, nudge. Understand the difference between regional and contact. Um, and then also understand the difference between foliated and non-foliated rocks um, and where they each happen. So that's about all I have for you. Um, metamorphism is kind of that weird in between, but you get such awesome examples of rocks and they're typically really, really gorgeous. Um, I'll have a couple laid out on my front table if you want to check them out more face to face. Um, and yeah, awesome. Let me know if you guys need anything. There is an exit slip. So remember to get that when you think you are done with your notes. Thanks, guys.